Hi guys and welcome to my 11th video. Thank you so much for joining me again if you're a return subscriber and hello if this is the first video that you're watching of mine. My name's Adrena, I'm an Australian teacher, a teacher's pay teacher seller and a mum. So my life and things around here get a little bit crazy but today's video I'm going to be showing and sharing you with you guys how I figured out how to digitize my own traditional artwork pieces. So if that's something that you're interested in, if you're wondering how you can go from drawing something in person uh, on a piece of paper or painting something in watercolor and then actually digitizing it to go onto the computer to make it a digital graphic or clip art, then please keep on watching because I think I figured it out and I want to share that process with you guys. And we might even in this video do a little one together. So if if you're interested in that then keep on watching so before I start this video I just want to quickly say if my videos are a little bit slow for you then please feel free to press the dots and change the playback speed to make it faster I know I can be a little bit like a bit of a slow talker or I sometimes I tend to ramble a little bit or don't get straight to the point I do apologize about that I'm still getting used to YouTube and filming so if that's something that you are finding a little bit of a struggle, that you like the videos but they're just taking a little bit too long, then feel free to just speed them up a little bit. So I'll try my best to get better at that and to try and make these videos a little bit more speedy and a little bit more uh, better. So I want to basically just quickly show you guys some traditional paintings that I did, that I did then digitize and made into clip art. So because it's coming up to Halloween, I thought why not make some... Halloween pumpkins and turn them into clip art. I'm going to show you what they look like now. So these are my little pumpkins and I just did this on uh, watercolor paper and I use a little watercolor palette set. It wasn't anything fancy or expensive. I literally just purchased these watercolors from uh, one of the kind of cheaper shops that we have around here. Uh, it's called King Kong. I don't know if anyone over, if you guys are watching from the United States, you're probably like, what's that? But if you're from Australia, you'll know what King Kong is. <laughs> anyway, so I got just like a watercolor set from that, and that's the watercolors that I use with just some kind of Montmartre cheaper paper. But what I did like about this paper was the texture on it, so that's what I like about this when I was painting on it. So anyway, I'm just going to show you what I've done with these. So I've made 12 little pumpkins. This one's probably my favorite. <laughs> this one had a little bit of a bleed there, but that's okay because I was able to fix it um, in the post-production of when I digitized it. I like this one too, actually. Oh, and then there's just a random cauldron at the end that I didn't actually end up uh, finishing. So that is my little pumpkins and I'm going to show you on screen what they look like as clip art. So in a moment I'll put them on screen so I'll show you how they look here. So I was able to digitize these and make them into clip art. So hopefully you could see them and I just want to show you something else quickly as well. So I made the pumpkins using watercolor but I also had a little experiment with just pencil and watercolor paper because like I said I like the texture on that watercolor paper so what I did was I just drew, uh, I don't know why I chose this as a thing to draw but anyway I chose a gnome. <laughs> And I drew a gnome coming up to Halloween and like a Halloween inspired gnome and so I did that on just using pencil and on watercolor paper so I'll show you that so this is the gnome that I drew and again this is just on watercolor paper I just sketched it with a pencil and colored it in with just normal pencils nothing too fancy and I was able to digitize this little fellow as well. So I just wanted to have a little play around to see what the process would be like because I hadn't really digitized my traditional drawings before. So I really wanted to like learn how to do that. And one of the reasons why I wanted to learn that was because you can just kind of feel the love and the detail. It's just different from drawing it completely digital. I feel like you can almost feel it when you're all, like 
there's just a different vibe when you get a piece of clip art that's been hand drawn to begin with and then digitized I feel like because it's like a little bit less perfect it's more imperfect but also you can kind of see more of the like sketch lines or more of the coloring in lines that are more realistic and more true to life so that's why I, I really wanted to learn how to kind of digitize my own traditional drawings but I will say it does take a lot longer and so that's that little guy and I will show you what it looked like as I digitized it I put it on my computer and then I printed it out so this is what it looks like so this is what it looks like when I printed it out so that's side by side I will just say there was a bit of a discrepancy when I was doing the editing because as you can see the I don't know hopefully you can see on camera but this uh, the original one you can see is slightly different orange compared to this one but overall Overall, I'm really happy with the colouring of that, but it's not exactly how it is in uh, the, its original form. So that's just something to take in consideration when you are thinking about digitising your work. You might have to do some extra post editing when you are fixing the colours up. So that was my gnome. Now I'm going to show you now. Uh, on the computer what they look like as clip art and then after that we're going to create a clip art piece together and I'm going to go and walk you through the process of it okay so let's get straight into that I'm going to take you over to my computer and let's go okay so I've just got PowerPoint open and I'm just going to open up uh, my pumpkins that I digitized and made into clip art so I'm going to go and just select all of these so I'm just going to go and select all of these and then I'm going to press insert and as you can see these are my clip art. You can really see the texture, I'm going to make them a little smaller. Okay so let's just spread them out a little but yeah I was just going to say you can really see kind of the texture in the clip art which I love. I think they just look so lovely when they've got that nice bit of texture to them and so if you hear my son in the background I do apologize little man has just woken up from his nap so he's just playing in the background there. So I'm just going to make these a little bit smaller so you can kind of see them but basically uh, I was able to digitize these. I'm going to show you the process, you guys, but I was able to digitize them through scanning them onto my computer and then um, sending them over to Procreate from my computer and then editing them in Procreate and then sending them back to my computer. Let me just say, yes, it was a bit of effort and time that it took to do this. So don't get me wrong. It took a bit of time and effort to create these little guys. But I do really think that the actual quality of these, or these I'm going to enlarge one so you can see it a little better. Just copy that. Paste it into here. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but there's the texture of the watercolour paper mixed with the watercolours. And I just really liked it. It looks really authentic and realistic and like true to what it um, would look like if you had hand painted them yourself. So that's what this one looks like. And when you're creating with these, again, you can do so many different little things. You can change the background. Let's make it like a black. And it's just cool because you can make little posters, you could do all different types of things. So yeah, that's what they look like and they have been done with watercolour as I've said. So you can just get a feel of what quality um, you can come out with. And now I'm going to show you what the pencil one looks like because I did draw the gnome. So I did draw the gnome and then I digitized him by scanning the same, same process. But as you can see, I'm gonna insert this little guy that I created. So this is the gnome. And the same thing, which is why I did it on the watercolor paper, you can see the texture in 
hopefully you can see it on the camera, but you can see the texture and even some of the sketch marks that I have done uh, and even my colouring in, you can see like little white gaps. It just looks so much more realistic and authentic to like as if you had really hand drawn it because it has been created from, from a hand drawn image. So yeah, you can resize it to as big or small as you like it and I'm just going to show you Two other things that I did with this because I also digitized it as well. So what I did, I'm going to show you this one that I fully digitized without going off the clip art version. So you can kind of see the difference, right? So this, let me just put them side by side. So this was the hand drawn one here and digitized and this one was me then going over it in Procreate and creating a, just a purely digital version using this as the skirt from using this as the reference image to create a full digital version of this and then I also changed it into a black and white version which I'll show you for colouring in purposes so that was one cool thing I was able to do there was one cool thing I was able to do through Procreate that I was able to then a black and white version for if I wanted to use it in um, a product that required kids to colour it in. So that's the three. So the original, the fully digital and then the black and white digital. All made from this one image that I did and a hand drew. So I've shown you what my artwork looks like when it's been digitised. So if you'd like to learn how to do it the way that I've done it, then you're going to need three things. First of all, you're going to need your traditional work. So whether you've done it in pencil, whether you've done it in markers, oil pastels, watercolor, whatever, you're just going to need your artwork to begin with or create your artwork. Second of all, you're going to need a scanner. Okay, so a scanner to your laptop or your computer. And third of all, you're going to be needing Procreate on the iPad. That is the tool that I used here to be able to edit my clip art to make it, make it usable as clip art. So those are the three things that you need. This is only the way that I've done it. There, I'm sure there are other ways that you could digitize your work, but this is the way I figured out most successful for me. So let's get started. We're going to start by drawing our artwork. So we're going to do one together now. Let's go. Okay, so for this example, you guys, today we're going to be using some pencils. So these are just the Milan pencils. I've had these for ages. I think I got them from Officeworks. If you're in Australia, you know that what that is. In the US, I'm not too sure if you guys know these brand or anything. But uh, there's just a little set that I think I got from Officeworks. And I've just got this little book. I literally paid $3.50 for it from King Kong. And what I do like about it is the texture, like I said before. And so I want to create something uh, on here. So I reckon we might even do a Halloween eye, like an eyeball. Since it's Halloween, let's add an eyeball. Let's digitize an eyeball. Okay, so we're going to make an eyeball. Uh, with I'm just going to sketch out an eyeball. I'm going to color it in and then I'm going to show you what else, what next to do. Okay. Let's go. I'm just going to let you know I'm going to start by trying to draw this as big as I can because you want, when you're digitizing things, you want them to be quite large in a way so that when it goes onto the computer, it's easier for the quality to stay as good as it can.
Alrighties guys, so this is the drawing that we're going to digitize. This is the little eyeball, the freaky eyeball that we made in the lead up to Halloween. So yeah, nothing special, nothing fancy, but I did just want to quickly pop in here and say I tried to make it as big as I could on that full page. Now this is only, what size is A5? Yeah, so it's A5. The gnome that I created, however, when I was showing you that before, it was actually A4, so you can kind of just see the difference. But basically the reason why I tried to draw this as big as I could on this particular piece of paper uh, was because when you digitize it, the bigger it is, sort of the better it is and the more clarity it will, will retain when you enlarge it on screen. So the bigger you can kind of do it, the better. If you're having like an eyeball that was like that small, it'd be a lot harder to uh, enlarge. So that's the reason why I've done it there. And again, I know that this is watercolor paper, but I really love the texture in this. That's why I chose to draw it on this using type of paper and just using pencils. So you guys, I'm not the best color in era, if that's even a word, but that's just a simple example. And over time, as I practice my art, I'm gonna get better as well, but this is just for the example of this video. We've got a little eyeball that we're gonna digitize now. So, step two, let's scan it into our computer. So, let's do that. So I'm gonna scan this onto my computer. So the printer that I have or the scanner I have it's just this Epson Workforce Pro WF3825 so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scan that through so just pop it in open this up pop it in here again you can probably rip the sheet off if you want to make it a little easier but I'll just see if it works like this it should be all right so then I just want to go to my computer and on a Mac, I don't know what computer you guys have, but on this computer, I just can go up to search and I just usually just type scan and it just comes up with Epson Scan Smart. I just go enter and it should pop up. Here we go. And I just press scan here and you'll see it. Oh, Bella. So it's just starting to scan here. And you'll see it shortly. Now, I just want to say too, while it's loading, if you have the option on your computer to choose the amount of DPI, because I know on my last printer it allowed me to choose the, the DPI of the scan, then uh, choose 300 DPI or over, because that's gonna you want something a higher quality. So um, anyway, this is the let's just rotate this. This is the scan. So I can see there's a bit of a crinkle there. So what I might do is that I actually might rip it off this page. So I'm not 100% happy with how that scan. I'm going to try and rescan that. And if you're not happy with it, that's okay. Just scan it until you are. So what I might do in this case, I'm just going to take that out and I'm going to actually rip it off here. All right, so I've just put that back in there. So if I just press scan again. It's just going to load and scan again. Okay, uh, actual drawing now I'm thinking of why it's coming up that way. Cause I don't know if you can see, but uh, you can kind of see there's like that light part in there, but that's okay. Look, just for the purpose of this video, I won't be too pedantic about it. Um, it doesn't look terrible, it just kind of looks like it's a bit folded, but that's okay because I can edit it in Procreate after if I want to. So basically once we've done that, I'm just going to press next down here and then I'm just going to click save. I might rename it as eyeball, eyeball purple and I'm going to save it as a PNG, make sure it's a PNG and then I'm just going to save it to my desktop, press save and just give it a second. And there'll be two because I scanned the first one this time. I said I thought I might as well just keep it, but I'll show you what they look like. This is the first. Get out of that. So that was the first scan. Hi, Mama. Did you say hi, Mama? Oh, darling. <laughs> Alrighties, guys. So what we want is we want to have 
this scan open as well as your iPad because what we're going to do is we're going to airdrop it to our iPad. So the way we do this is if you go up here, so this is just on the scan, if you go up here on a Mac, then we go to share the document and then you want to click airdrop. Alrighty, so it is now scanned onto the iPad. And you can still see it's retained the texture, which is awesome. Uh, I'm still not 100% happy with that little part there, but that's okay. We might be able to edit that, like I said. So what we want to do now, this is just going to be in your photos. What we're going to do is we're going to open up Procreate. And we're going to go to the plus, And we're going to just do, go to A4. If we're going to do the wrench. We're going to click Add. And then here, we're going to click Insert a Photo. And we're going to click the photo. And then what we're going to do... Let's just turn it around so that we can get it to the biggest it can go. Okay, so what you're going to do then is we're going to flip it or turn it just by using your fingers. And now this is where the process of editing starts now. The way we're going to edit this is we're going to, first of all, crop the background because we don't need this excess stuff. We're going to crop the background. So to do that, first of all, we're just gonna. Sh I'm just gonna show you. We've got the layer, so I might just call this. Rename it. Call it eyeball. Purple. Okay. So we're just gonna check this. So we've got the eyeball purple layer. We don't need any extra layers yet because we're gonna crop. We're gonna not crop, but we're gonna take away this background. So the way I do this is I'm gonna choose this tool, which is like a selection tool. And I'm going to go and click on it somewhere and you'll see this little grey dot and what we want to do is we want to just draw as closely, it's okay if it's not quite on there because you can always fix it later with the erase tool, but you're just going to draw as close as you can to around the actual image. Because what we are going to be doing with this is we're going to then put it on its own layer. Okay, so I'll do that, go as close as I can. And if you just make a mistake, let me just show you something guys. So if I accidentally went like that, don't worry, you don't need to start again. All you need to do is two finger tap and it goes back to where. So it's really flexible, so don't feel like, oh no, I, you know you've gone and made a little mistake. Don't worry because you can just always go back with this which is awesome. So just go as close as you can all the way around because we don't need this background part. We're going to end up making this transparent so then it can be used as clip art. But what you do want to aim for is to connect it back up to this grey dot here. So once it gets to that grey dot, like so, it'll come up with this kind of like line um, on the background. It's kind of a moving line. Now, this is the next part where you should pay attention to this because this is the next part you need to know. So with three fingers, we're going to swipe down and this little option will come up. So what we want from this is we want cut and paste. Cut and paste, you'll see that it's now gone to that. Um, what it actually has done now is created what we just selected has then now moved it onto its to a new layer and I'll show you that what I mean. So if I click the boxes up here, you'll see I've now got my eyeball removed from the main original picture. So if I get rid of that and get rid of the background, I'm left with this, which is the eyeball that we are going to pretty much use as clip art. So I can see that there's some fixing up to do. So we're just gonna go around with our a razor tool and get as close as we can to that out oh sorry <laughs> as close as we can to that outline and fix it up and then we can sort out this eye if we want to later as well but for now let me just go ahead and clean this up make sure that your razor tool is on the monoline one righties so let's go ahead zoom up and let's raise this out Thank you. 
And just a little tip here with the raising part of it, try to make sure you take little breaks when you're raising, only for the fact is if you need to go back and you've done a lot, then you're going to have to go back and do the whole lot. So I like to take little breaks, and what I mean is like I'll just erase a little bit, take my pen off, I'll raise a little bit and take my pen off because if I needed to go back then I would just have to go back and do that last little bit again not the whole thing if I was to just not take my pen off at all so I hope that's a little tip that might be helpful okay so we're getting close to I'm being happy with that and don't worry if it's like Again, this is just a purpose for this video, so you can clean it up as much as you want, but um, sometimes that imperfect sort of look is good as well. At least I like that kind of hand-drawn, imperfect sort of look at least. Okay, so that is basically that. What we are going to do now, so I'm just going to check it by putting on the background colour, so just by clicking the, invi clicking the visibility on. So it's going to show me sort of what it's going to look like. So... If we wanted to alter or add anything extra onto this, we could just add another layer and then we could use a brush. Say we want maybe just like a spray paint brush, airbrushing. Let's just see what this looks like if I put a little bit of black on top of that. All right, so let's just have a little go. So we don't want that that big, so we're going to change the brush size, move it down a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, I can further alter this so we get rid of that line or whatever that sh highlight sort of was so you can do something like that but to be honest I don't know if it looks as natural or realistic so maybe I could just turn down the opacity so that's what it looks like without and that's what it looks like with so again, this is just a video for an example, so I would play with that until I was happy with it. I didn't have to um, add anything extra digitally if I didn't want to. I could have it just exactly how it was. And then now, this is the third part for it. So, so before we go ahead and do anything with this, I'm just going to go to gallery because I want to show you something. So let's go to gallery. And I'm just going to duplicate this because it's always good to have a duplicate of the original because if you do edit and you mess it up to a point where there's no return, it's always good to have an original. So I always like to do that. So the editing now that I've cropped that, the editing will be done on this second one. So I just wanted to show you this because it's probably pretty handy for anyone that wants to also get the most out of their clip art. So if we were to click on this eyeball, for example, so we're on this eyeball layer. Now if we go up to this wand here and we choose, saturation brightness we could go to that one and we click layer you will get this little screen down below and what you can do which is kind of really helpful is you can slide these and it can totally change your whole outlook of your clip art so that's amazing and it's amazing because say if you wanted to have a, a few variations of this particular eyeball then you could do that without having to recreate them all again and it will be the exact same image, but it will just be different colours. So I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to leave it as that. I just thought I'd share with, that, share with you that. Again, you can also change the saturation. So if you want it really bright and bold, then you can change that. If you want it kind of just like grayscale, you can change that. Again, same thing with the brightness as well. So I just go back because we're not going to do any of that. But I thought it would be very handy to share with you guys that. So like I did with the gnomes, if I if I wanted to create a black and white version of this, I'd just have to go to layers, I would go to the plus sign, and then what I would do is I would go to this layer where the actual image is, and I would just turn the opacity down so that I could see it when I was um, going over it or tracing it. So if I click here, I go to my brush line, I want to go calligraphy, I want monoline, I want black. Okay, so I would just go over and trace it. I'm doing this a little bit half-heartedly, guys. I'd obviously do it very much more uh, <laughs> concentrated if I was doing it for myself, but I'm just showing you that. But yeah, basically, you just go and, you know, you go and adjust it and basically trace over um, your image to make it the black and white version. But today I'm not going to do that with you guys because this video will be way too long. 
probably long enough as it is. So I'm just going to go back to here. I'm going to turn the opacity back up and then I'm basically just now going to show you how I would get this image onto the computer. So first of all when I'm exporting I want to make sure that the only thing that I'm exporting is what I want to keep. Put the things that I want to export on and I can even if I wanted to delete this eyeball purple because I don't need that anymore. So it's just the eyeball and the layer on top that I'm exporting. And what I want to do is I want to go to the wrench, I want to go to canvas, and I want to go crop and resize. Because as I've said in other videos in the past, especially one about if you want to check out my video, it's my top five procreate tips for clip if you're wanting to create clip art, there's some helpful tips in there. I go over this one here. Go settings, snapping, and you want to basically crop it so that the edge is there so we don't have this extra white space when people are going to use it for clip art. Then I'm going to click done and then what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to go to the wrench again and then I'm going to click on share. From share I will choose PNG. PNG is the best part for clip art. Um, I, you can do JPEG as, you, as well but I usually just stick to PNG just tra transfer it or airdrop it over to your computer. Again, you guys, if you don't have a Mac, uh, then that's okay, but you just have to figure out the way that you would obviously transfer things over on your computer. So you'll see it's just airdrop straight over, and let's open it up. That's what it looks like. Hey guys, I'm sorry about the loss in quality on this. I have had to use my phone because my SD cards ran out of space. So I'm just going to insert our eyeball and there it is. So we can obviously enlarge it, make it smaller, but that's basically turned into clip art and you can do whatever you want with this now. So if I wanted to make a cool poster, I could just change the background, make it black. We've got the eyeball there, we could stick that there. We could add some text, add some cool text to it. And yeah, there you go, that's your clip art. You've just then digitized your, your clip art that you have created. So here we go guys, that is your clip art. You can see there's a bit of imperfections in this one. And again, that's okay, like I don't mind the imperfect look, but if I was to do this for an actual product, I'd probably just spend a little extra time just clearing things up, making sure I was happy with that. This is just for the purpose of this video, so you can see how you go from, you can go from creating your own traditional artwork to then digitizing it. And then if you'd like, you can put it up for sale on TPT. And that's that. Okay guys, so I'm just popping in to say thank you so much for watching this video if you made it to the end. I hope that this video provided you with lots of value and then maybe you can go out and try to make your own clip art. Don't get me wrong, it does take a little bit of time and effort to do it this way. Like, it does, it does take a little while. It is a longer process, uh, but I feel like the quality and the result at the end is just so much more authentic and genuine and it's really a nice effect to see at the end of it and you can just tell the difference between something that's been hand drawn to begin with and then scan through to create clip art than it is to just have digitally created clip art. Both are great types of clip art, they just have different purposes and they have different kind of looks at the end of them. So. Yeah, I just wanted to pop in and say that. And yeah, I just want to say thank you for watching if you made it to the end. And if you if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like just so other people can find it as well. So thanks so much once again, and I will see you in my next video. Adios!